Hello, this is Dr. Loach from humanbodyhelp.com and today I'm going to be running through the structures of the femur. This right here is the femur. We're looking at the anterior surface of the femur right now. Up at the proximal end of the femur you'll notice that it's shaped like this where there's this nice big knobby ball at the end and then a narrow neck down at the distal end toward the knee, we're going to be looking at condyles down here. The medial aspect of the femur is going to be this side here, where the head is going to articulate with the pelvis. We're also going to see this uh, structure down here known as the adductor tubercle, which is also going to be medial. And then on the lateral aspect of the femur, you would be able to notice this structure right here this structure is going to be called the greater trochanter. Okay, so proximal, distal, medial, lateral, anterior, and then the posterior surface of the femur is going to look like this, and it has this nice line up the back of it known as the linea aspera. That's on the back. Also, popliteal surface is back here as well, and that's behind the knee. Popliteal literally means behind the knee. Okay. So let's run through the structures again, starting with the anterior view of the femur. This is the head of the femur, and we can see that when we tilt it like this, we can see the fovea capitis. The fovea capitis literally means pit in the head. All right, so this little pit right here in the head of the femur is going to be for the attachment of the ligamentum teres or the round ligament of the femur and that's going to help to anchor the head of the femur in the acetabulum. Down distally, if we move in that direction we see this area gets narrower here and this area is known as the neck of the femur. Okay, just like our neck on our body is narrower than our head. Early anatomists thought this looked like a neck and this looked like a head, so that's how they got their names. Over in this direction right here, on the lateral aspect, we've got the greater trochanter of the femur. And then on the other side, we have the lesser trochanter of the femur. Now you can notice that the lesser trochanter is a little bit more posterior, so we can rotate it a little bit like this so that we can see that lesser trochanter better. Okay. Trochanter is a term that means large bumps. In those large bumps, the greater and lesser trochanters are larger than the tubercles in other places in the body. Okay, this would be the shaft of the femur and going down to the distal end of the femur, the end that's closest to the knee, we can see a smooth surface right here. This is where the patella is going to articulate with the femur. Okay, the patella would be the kneecap and it would sit right here. And then down here, if I were to show a close-up of this, these smooth articular surfaces right here are the condyles of the femur. The medial condyle is going to be located on the medial side, okay, so we can use our head as a landmark to help us identify medial. So this is medial condyle down here and this is lateral condyle. The epicondyles would be above the condyles. This would be the medial epicondyle since we're dealing with the medial condyle over here. And then lateral epicondyle on this side since we're dealing with the lateral condyle over here. Proximal to the medial epicondyle, we have this bump right here, that bump that sticks out a little bit. That's known as the adductor tubercle. And that's going to be uh, one of the sites of attachment for the adductor magnus muscle right there. So those are the structures on the anterior surface of the femur. If we move to the back of the femur, we can see more stuff. Here we can see the rest of the head of the femur. We can see the fovea capitis a little bit better, the neck. We can see our greater and lesser trochanters, and we can see this crest in between the trochanters. That's called the intertrochanteric crest. 
intertrochanteric crest. And then we see this roughened area, just distal to that, that roughened area right there is called the gluteal tuberosity. That's going to be uh, one of the sites of attachment for the gluteus maximus muscle. That leads into the linea aspera, which we can see down here. And then we can see the linea aspera splits like so and forms this smooth surface. This smooth surface would be located posterior or on the back of the knee. So it gets a name that's descriptive of that. This is the popliteal surface. Okay. Here we can see the condyles. Uh, this would be the lateral condyle, looking at my landmarks up here, lateral condyle and medial condyle. And then there's this intercondylar fossa located right here. Okay, we can see adductor tubercle on the medial as well. I want to go back up here to the proximal end of the femur and show you this indentation or this pit in here. Right? That's called the trochanteric fossa. Right? One of the uh, deep external rotators of the hip, specifically the obturator externus, is going to attach there. Okay? If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.